Hi there folks, my name is OpenBag2, and this video is an overview of the new One Dimension Scaffolding Shulker Reactor farm from Ending Credits. A few things to get out of the way, this is not a block by block build tutorial, but if you are considering whether to build a shulker farm in your survival world, I hope this video will help you make your decision about whether this is the one you want to build. Number two, I am using the better end mod because that's how I roll, but I am not using any better end blocks and everything you see here will absolutely work in vanilla. So what's going on with this farm? Well, it's quite possibly the easiest, most efficient shulker farm you can build in Minecraft right now. It uses no redstone, it can be built right next to an end city. It only took me about two hours to make, and it puts out about 450 shells an hour, all while you just AFK without any need for an auto clicker. So as you've already seen, I've selected the location for my farm close, but not too close to an end city. Just, uh, it's hitting the level so that, the Y level, so it's high enough off the ground, yet not like so high that it's going to be impossible to get my stuff. In the center goes this barrel, and then you put hoppers out 15 blocks in every uh, compass direction. Cardinal direction? Compass direction? I don't know. Uh, I'm putting it close enough that I'm not going to have to do too much in terms of rails, but not so close that the shulker that I transport into my farm is going to go back. I'm also now breaking this center barrel because I want to just be able to put up this scaffolding to go all the way. And now I'm working on my first layer, starting with uh, soul sand that I will be able to set on permanent fire. I think soul sand over soul soil because it's slightly less than a full block in height. Man, these redstoners figuring this stuff out in terms of how to control these shulker bullet pathfinding AIs and making these teeny tiny adjustments, it's, it's, it blows my mind. I wish I understood the mechanics better, but honestly, you got to do a trade-off. You can either build a farm that you can understand, uh, which for shulker mechanics, I'm pretty sure would just mean going into a, uh, just keeping raiding end cities until you run out of end cities that you can feasibly get to, or you can just trust the redstoners, uh, trust their logic, trust their research, and just build their designs. So here I am building up these stairs, which are going to allow shulkers to teleport inside the killing chamber slash collection chamber, but not like below. Now, uh, this right here is the trickiest part of the whole build. You really only want to place down eight, I think eight, yeah, nine minus one, uh, eight half slabs to serve as the base for the scaffolding, but it's, you know, how are you going to place a, uh, a slab in midair not connected to anything? So at first my idea was, why don't I just leave the connecting blocks, make me make some interesting pattern out of it? But then I realized I'm pretty sure we want the bottoms of the scaffolding to be places that the shulkers can teleport to uh, when they're duplicating. And so if you did actually fill all that in, it would slightly decrease the rate slash effectiveness of the farm. So I'm not actually sure if that's true, and I'm, but I'm erring on the side of just trust the experts, breaking the uh, blocks in between, and losing some to the void. Oh well, when I needed more, I could just go to the end city and break off a few pieces of that, uh, which I don't show in this video, don't worry. But yeah, the, the nice thing about this farm, the thing I absolutely love about this farm, is how radially symmetric it is. So once you figure out what you're doing in one corner, you just copy that for the other three corners. Uh, I love how just simple and symmetric it is, and once you get a flow going, you just keep that flow. There's no, you know, weird spacings or anything. It's literally just keep going, keep going, mirror everything you have. And so this glass layer, I, I'm sure it could have been any transparent block, but I love that it's glass because it means that when I show you later on the in, inner workings of the farm, you can kind of see things. You can even actually see shulkers when you're in, um, when you're actually playing without going into free cam just by uh, like going into F5. So here, another tricky bit when you're 
well, an idiot like me, is placing down the scaffolding. As you saw, I just lost a piece of scaffolding because you need to make sure that they're anchored to the right points. And that means going out to the second block out where there's actually these anchor points and then filling things in. Generally speaking, just going from the center and then going out is the winning strategy. I'm just, you know, dumb. Uh, I also really love that uh, everything goes seven blocks out when you're doing this placing, you know, when you're kind of starting on one of the collection chamber walls and then facing out uh, to form this plus you're going seven out, which means you can just hold down place and then it just goes out like that. Uh, it, it's really nice. And once you get a flow going, it's really easy to do. So unless you're, you just make mistakes, it's, it's just super easy and quick to build. Uh, working with scaffolding, not only does it exploit this really cool behavior of shulkers when they're teleporting, but you just get a flow going and it just makes the build time so, so much faster. As I said, it took me about two hours in survival. Uh, and I, as you can see here, am far from being a pro. Uh, next layer up. I'm putting in uh, some solid blocks and some glowstone blocks. I don't know whether other uh, light blocks could work here. Uh, I know that different light sources have different mechanics in terms of whether they're transparent or opaque to redstone. I know there's no redstone here, but I didn't want to uh, take any chances. And again, perils of not understanding the farm you're building. Glowstone is cheap enough, and I, you only need uh, 12, so whatever. Now we're going up to another solid layer, and this is the first layer where mobs can actually spawn in what we've been building. Everything else, I guess technically those uh, eight times four uh, bottom or, uh, top slabs that we were using as the base, technically an enderman could have spawned there, but odds would have been incredibly unlikely. And so what you're going to see is as you're building, uh, if you are not using uh, the better end mod with the end veil uh, uh, enchantment, you're going to start getting some mob spawns up here. So be careful. Maybe grab a carved pumpkin or just know to look at your feet. Or embrace the challenge and when you start seeing those endermen, uh, start having some fun with them. So around here, this is a non-spawnable area with these bottom slabs. And there we have our first uh, visitor up here. It looks like he's angry. I'm using the fresh animations pack. I'm not sure why they're ang they look angry. They're not angry at me. You can see they're not attacking me. But, and you can see the ones down there are, like, super chill. Down on the ground, I mean. Uh, and yeah, so I'm just knocking them off because they're in my way. Technically, they weren't in my way. And by the time uh, this started happening, I was like, oh, let's let them spawn. It's fine. They seemed to mostly get out of the way when I was laying down these scaffolding. But this scaffolding also wasn't particularly sensitive to... Eh, I just could come back and put them down later. This part was, however, they were getting in the way and being kind of annoying, and this is where I decided to start having some fun. So I'm putting out down the perimeter first, and then I'm filling things in, and these Endermen are effectively trapped in these areas. I don't think they can teleport out. So as I uh, place these down, the areas they are in get smaller and smaller, and I can just whack them and kill them. So here I've got like one, two, like what, six, seven, eight in this small enclosed area and I'm making their area smaller and smaller. I've got one trapped entirely and I'm just kind of hurting them so that I can get out my sword, whack them, and hey, free XP and ender pearls. And those ender pearls, by the way, are gonna come in handy in a minute because I, I did a stupid a uh, few layers down. So here we're going up and this is the final layer of scaffolding. This really, really doesn't take too long to build. I know I've been, um, you know, jump cutting a lot, but you're just making this plus pattern, scaffolding super quick to place, and then here it is. This is the final layer. This is the, these are bottom slabs, uh, so that you're creating the roof of the farm where uh, mobs cannot spawn. It's going to be completely safe to enter the farm from the skies. And as I put everything down, I'm just leaving this hole in the middle. Uh, there's the hole in the middle where I'm going to be able to enter the farm and there it is I'm done now as I said I'm an idiot uh, so first of all I'm doing a few things I'm actually placing down the uh, whatchamacallit the barrel that needs to go in the center to collect everything and then I use an ender pearl to allow me to actually go and place these buttons on the side to prevent shulkers from uh, duplicating or teleporting onto those pieces when I was originally designing and testing the farm, I forgot that, and I was like, where did my shulkers go? Did they just die or something? No, they didn't die. They teleported out there, and they couldn't see me, and 
they were then safe. So, uh, presumably if you got the farm completely up and running, it would have been fine. Anyway, now it's time to collect my shulker. I selected this guy because it was very close to the Y level I was working on, and I could very, very easily build the collection system. This is just an activator and a detector. Don't need to use a detector. You could just keep it always on with a uh, redstone block or something like that. Uh, but yeah, placing down the rails, these are just regular rails, and this is definitely my least favorite part of the build. Uh, I... And this isn't even part of the build, this is just the collection mechanism. I, you know, this is always tricky, you can see, I don't think anyone particularly enjoys collecting shulkers. The mechanics are weird and wonky. Uh, and I honestly don't understand how I captured this guy in the end, but other than, you know, just some general principles. But here you can see I'm trying to get the rail as close to it as possible so that once it's actually captured, it's just going to be a matter of giving it a push with a furnace minecart and then it'll go directly into the system. And I am being very aware of where it can and cannot see me as I try to place down... Uh, you know, basically cover up this hole because don't want this guy falling down or teleporting anywhere else or my materials falling down elsewhere. I, I thought I could just place the minecart there and he'd fall in. Nope, that, that doesn't work. Nope. So, and you can see him taking damage here. That's not me hitting him. I'm, it's because I had thorns on my elytra, which, you know, really stupid brought him down to fairly low health, I'm pretty sure, and it's a miracle it didn't die on me. But it didn't, and that low health actually just means that the farm is going to activate far, far quicker. So here I am, trying to get the rail collection system, not really knowing what I'm doing and just trialing and erroring it. I had made backups during this whole process. This is a single-player world, so I had the luxury of doing that. I'd recommend finding a good tutorial for capturing shulkers, or going for one of the shulkers that people recommend you get, like the ones near the entrance to the end cities. So here, yeah, I, I pushed it and it got captured, I still don't understand what happened. And now it's hitting itself with its own shell, uh, not shells, bullets, and thank god it didn't die. That was a close thing. So, uh, I had to put down some additional rails, I forgot to put down some uh, rails underneath, and then just one push from the furnace minecart, and boom! There we have our shulker in the system. As soon as he opens his shell, he's going to teleport directly into the kill chamber. So there he is, kill chamber, collection chamber, whatever. And so the second I enter this farm, he'll start firing bullets at me and we can start collecting things. So here I am now, one second, here I am uh, entering my farm, huge area. I'm stripping naked here because the shells were just going straight into the fire when I had my armor on. I'm not sure if that's something weird with the better end armor, but whatever. I'm completely safe inside here, and you can see right now, shell goes in, hits the... or goes up to the stairs, bounces back, and after a few hits you'll see it duplicate. There was a duplication. It's going to duplicate again even, and eventually the it's going to hit itself, die, and be collected. Now, yeah, there's you can see your collection. And really, the rates here, it took, pro probably because I got it to such low health accidentally with all the thorns and the hitting itself during the collection, but oh my god, this got up to speed so quickly, suddenly everything was full up with shulkers, and I was getting, I don't know if it was 450 an hour, it might have actually been higher, I didn't time it, but I quite easily got a full row of shulker shells with very little time AFKing. So would I recommend this farm? Absolutely. I cannot imagine something easier or quicker to get up and running and more forgiving for people like me who are absolute idiots. But y'all do you if you don't like hanging out in the end. Yeah, I mean, maybe choose one of the two dimension farms, but I love this one and I really can't recommend it enough.